John Boziak back in the new studio. What do you think? Uh, I like this place a lot better than your last place. A little bit more room, right? Yeah, you know, you come in, you got room to fucking stretch out, and, you know, you're not tripping over cables. And I mean, the other one was like, you know, it was cool, but it was like... Yeah, like time went by. It was a cave. It was like a little fucking hole. Yeah, but there was too many wires, because that was originally like an office, you know, like office office. So you have all those cabinets, and it just killed all the room. Yeah, 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 that's right, yeah. Yeah, I like this place a lot better, man. It's cool. So let's go back to the message to your haters that we heard about that kind of got corrupted a little bit. So you were explaining to me before before we got on the podcast yeah. about that. So if you could elaborate on that. To what do you sh- mean, message to my haters? Well, you had a video on yeah. Boziak and uh-huh. Check them out. Subscribe. Uh, is that where I was just telling everybody to go fuck themselves? Pretty much. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. pretty much what that video was about. Yeah, I was just saying, you know, um, if you come on my channel with a bunch of crazy shit, then... Like, nobody is going to see your comment. You know what I'm saying? Because I, contr- I control the narrative. But I mean, when, like, you were going through the rat thing and this and that, and then all those fucking comments, and then Concrete clipped a little bit of something. You didn't say that. I said that. And, you know, if you could elaborate on that. If you'd like to, if you don't want to. We'll uh, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I don't really know if the, what there's too much to say about that, really. I mean, you know, it, it fucking, I don't give a fuck about what anybody thinks about me. And I don't give a fuck if who thinks what. So I mean, that's pretty much the gist of it. That's just you. Yeah, that's just me. I, you know what I mean. Like I just, I don't, I say whatever I want to whoever I want. You know what I mean. And at the end of the day, <clears throat> I'll throw anybody under the bus if you don't mean shit to me. You know what I mean. Like to to ensure my own survival on this planet. So especially if somebody fucks you over. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you know. But what a lot of people don't know is on your way to federal prison, you went to Leavenworth. And for those who don't know, that is a hellhole. Yeah, I had to get extradited from from Nebraska all the way back out to South Carolina to go back in front of the judge because I had absconded on probation. I took off on federal probation. And, um, you know, <clears throat> I got picked up in probably November of 2016, and I didn't get back in front of the judge until about April or May of 2017. So they just let you sit there and wait. Yeah, you know, and then you get bounced around from one shithole jail to another. You get put on airplane to get flown to Oklahoma, and then you got to go through that whole rigmarole. <clears throat> and then you get picked up and you get shipped out to Atlanta, and you got to wait there, and then... Yeah, it's like a whole fucking whole ordeal, man. I did the whole caboose. I did the whole train. <laughs> now, in that route, which one was the worst, would you say? There was a little shithole jail I was in down in um, down in Georgia, and I don't even remember the name of the county jail I was in. It was very, it was really small, but for whatever reason, they had a contract to hold all of the federal inmates. So when I left um, Atlanta, I was at the USP in the shoe in Atlanta. When I left Atlanta and they shipped me out to this little jail, um, it dude, it was deplorable. Like, it was horrible, bro. They starve you to death. Like the conditions you're you're living in, it's just like they don't like they just put you in like this cell block, and it's like two tiers, and you, it's pretty much just like. Mad Max and that motherfucker, dude. Like, there's no rule. There's no police on the pod. There's, like, this whole hierarchy and, like, this whole fucking... It's weird, dude. Like, it's like being shoved into a tiny little bubble where they're just watching you with cameras. It's like an experiment. Dude, there were people getting high in there. There There's people getting fucking Suboxone strips in. In Leavenworth? No, no, no. This was in that little fucking county jail. Oh, you're in in, in Atlanta. No, yeah, in Georgia. I'm still stuck on Leavenworth because I can't believe you went through that. Shit. I was in Leavenworth. Yeah, I was in Leavenworth for over a month, just and, waiting to get transferred. And anybody watching this, just Google Leavenworth, right? Leavenworth, that, that is like the Leavenworth Federal fucking yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. And at 13, you were stealing cars. Yeah, I was boosting cars when I was 13. <laughs> man, I could barely see over the steering wheel. I was stealing Dodge Neons. I was stealing uh, Dodge Caravans. You know, uh, Chrysler, Sebrings, any car that like so like so the older Chrysler and Dodge cars from the early late late nineties, early two thousands. Um, when you go to put the key in the ignition, there's a, there was a little glow ring that would light when you turn the interior lights on that would light up around the ignition key. Well, if you remove that, uh, it it exposed like a washer, like a that there was like a lot a little piece that locked, and if you pushed with a screwdriver and you twisted it, it released a, a spring 
which would release the whole ignition. And then you just put the key in there and there's like this little tiny triangle in there and you just put the screwdriver in there and that's it. <laughs> and I got so fast at fucking, when I was 13, I got so fast at cracking those motherfuckers open. Pop, pop, pop. And then the thing would shoot out and then that's it and you'd be gone. Fucking, you know what I mean? All over the neighborhood, jumping through fields. I was 13 years old doing that. Yeah. Carrying a pistol. I had a little 22 and shit. At 13? Yeah. Now this- I was out there. <clears throat> yeah, you were out there. Now, I, I don't think a lot of people know. They know that you, you had, like, a r- rough life growing up. But yeah. how many foster homes were you in? Um, I really wasn't in any foster homes. I thought these, I thought you were boys' schools or... No, 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 no. Yeah, they, yeah well, there's a difference. Me. There's a difference. Yeah. I was not never in foster care or anything like that. Um, I, I used to, When I started getting arrested when I was, like, 13, 12, 13 years old, getting brought home by the police, uh, breaking and entering... I did a lot of uh, vandalism. That was, uh, um, I was just acting out, man. You know what I mean? Like, my mom's was working, and my dad I was not involved in my life. He was around, but he like wasn't involved in my day-to-day life. And so the influences that I had growing up that I just were around were just uh, hoodlums in, in the neighborhood. You know what I mean? So they were teaching me how to steal when I was younger. They used to take me into stores. And remember, do you remember the starter jackets? With yeah, the, with yeah, the pocket yeah. in the front. Yep. I had a Charlotte Hornets and I had a, and I had a Chicago Bulls, and dude, I used to load up the front pocket in the store with candy and fucking whatever. You know what I mean? Like cigarettes, because they used to keep cigarettes out back in the day. Yeah. No, not no more. They keep them like you gotta ask for a key and shit. But and back in the now, day, well, they now used, they got fucking plastic over the shit. Yeah. Back in the day, they used to keep the cigarettes just out, and you could just walk in there and grab cartons. You know what I mean? And walk out. So, I was doing that, you know, and then I I started going to like a juvie. I went to uh, what, uh, the, like the juvenile home, but it was like, like hardcore. This place was like fucking hardcore, and that was like the first time. And then, well, and then what once, was the first one you went to? <clears throat> the very first, like, it was it was called um, the it was the it was the Wayne County Juvenile Detention Center, WCJDCJW or some shit like that. So that was like the very first place I started going to, and that was like, that's like county jail for youth. You know what I'm saying? Like you go there and before you got to go to court or you're going to go home on probation or you're going to fucking or they're going to send you away to one of these places that we're getting ready to fucking show here. So these places are called placements, like a placement. You know what I mean? You're going to a fucking program and you're there for a year. There's no going there and getting out in under a year. Like you do all these programs. It's a fucking year. You know what I'm saying? So but somebody has to put you in that placement. The judge. The judge. um, The judge will rule. And there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing your parents can do about it. And my mom, you know, I, she turned me over to the state. She turned custody of me over to the state because I would, kept going to juvenile hall. And once she did that, it was a wrap. I was in the, I was in the system. Like, they had me till I was 19. So I fucking, every fucking, I was out maybe a two months out of every year. I was out, and then I would violate or do something, and I would go right back to placement. And every time I'd go back, the, the security level would get higher and higher and higher. So it would start out in like a community-based program where I got to go home on the weekends and then I would fuck up. And then the next program would be I had to live there, but then I got to go home once a month. And then the next program I would fuck up and they put me in a higher security where I didn't get to go home on the weekends. I had to wear a uniform. It was like a boot camp. And then I fucked up after that. Well, I actually took off. I went AWOL from one of those motherfuckers, right? Me and my homie took off. Stole the van that they drive. They do the medical runs in. Well, what, do you, what do you mean you stole the van? Right. So, so, so you 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 break out of the facility. Yeah. Right? So yeah. So so, so dig this. And this <laughs> is in the book. This is all. This is all in my book. This whole ben, story is in my right book. There. Yeah. Uh, the, the story I'm getting ready to tell. It's in my book. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I was in a place called Teen Ranch when I was a teenager. It was one of the one of the times back when I was back and forth between uh, Florida and in in Michigan, and I had been incarcerated uh, as a teenager in Michigan at this place called Teen Ranch, and it was in North Branch or South Branch, fucking Michigan, or some shit like that. I don't really remember. But me and um, I ended up going there, and I don't remember why I went there. I, I was like, you know, I think I got caught stealing or breaking into somebody's house, and I had just gotten out of fucking, like, another Boysville program. So violated my probation, whatever. They sent me to this place. Well, like, three months after I got there... Um, one of the homies from the neighborhood showed up and me and him immediately were like, this place is soft. Like there's no, they don't lock none of the doors really. They fucking, there's no fences. It's wide open. You dig what I'm saying? It was just like three houses and then like a pond and like a big driveway that went up like this. And it was like a big 200 acre 
You know what I'm saying? And that was it. There was like three like you know like houses like where like where they housed different kids. So you guys could see like the openings right away. There, yeah, there was yeah. yeah me and this me and my homie were like, dude, and like it's, <laughs> it's in the sort of joke, right? It's in the middle of nowhere. Don't you know what I mean? Mind you, it's in the middle yeah. of fucking nowhere. Um, but yeah, no, we fucking yeah, we snuck out the door one night and uh, we caught because the midnight staff, the one that comes in where everybody's sleeping to stay overnight. Well, we knew the one motherfucker used to sleep. <clears throat> after a certain time, <laughs> you may be out. We'd be out there napping, cause you get up to use the bathroom and the motherfucker be out there napping. <laughs> but um, I need some water, dude. Gotcha. It's with locks on them, so we knew we had to get into the basement to get into these cabinets to get our clothes to to make the escape. And so we, so one of us snuck out the window and went down to the basement, cause so okay, so when when we walk anywhere on the campus, we had to walk in a straight line with all the kids and there was a line leader and then there was a line the person at the end of the line there was like there was a line captain and there's another line and they were like line check and then they'd fucking one two we'd all have to sound off for count to make sure you know what I mean? we were all in line so that the staff could physically hear us count before we moved from one location to the next to make sure they had everybody it was just a way to keep track and so i was i was at the end of the line so what i did is i put some wood chips in my pocket and I was the last person through the basement door because we used to go down the steps and into the basement, take all our clothes off, put them in the cabinets, lock them, go upstairs for the rest of the day or whatever. And so when I came in, uh, I took wood chips out of my pocket and I jammed them in the door jam. It were, were so when it when it pushes, so the thing would just stay inside the door, so you can just so it wasn't locked. So you get in now, right? <clears throat> yeah. So you can yeah. come in from the outside. And I did that, and um, so I jumped out of the window. And went down to the basement, came in, and he snuck across because the way you had to do it, you had to come out of this hallway, and there was like a, a common area, and the other side of the common area, there was a stairs that went down to the basement. And that's how you guys got out. Now you get out. Now, how do you at that <clears throat> age know how to rig a car? <laughs> I mean, no, he he had to go get the key to the to the to the to the van because we knew where they kept the keys to the van, and it was in the office in the, in, the, in the office drawer. Shit. And it's, he's sleeping on the couch. And the office is wide open on the other side of the kitchen. You know what I'm saying? The office door is open. Right. <clears throat> so, I, like I said, I jumped out of the window, went down to the basement. He snuck across the kitchen into the office, grabbed the keys to the van, and, and then I came up from the basement, opened the door into the kitchen, letting him down into the basement from the inside. And then we got clothes and fucking shoes and... We're out. We got. We jumped in the van. There was this van they used to use to like make medical runs and shit, like a fucking long passenger van, and we drove that motherfucker all the way back down to the city. <laughs> and how did you get caught? Uh, we split up when our separate ways. I got busted like a couple months later. I was at this girl's house, and I think like her mom knew that I was. I was like on the run, and she called the cops, and then like they came and nice. They chased me, and fucking it was like a whole whole thing. Yeah, but yeah, no. And then I ended up. Uh, I ended up getting, you know, actually they sent me away to, um, that was Teen Ranch, and then they put me in a place called um, Wolverine. Wolverine Human Services. It was like, a, yeah, it was a place like in Vassar, Michigan, where it was like cabins out in the woods. Like in the middle of nowhere. In the middle of fucking nowhere. Vassar, Michigan is in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And how long were you there for? Ten and a half, eleven months. Whew. Now, did you walk out on your own? or Yeah, no, I went to court. I completed the program, and then I left. And then I, I was out from, I want to say that was around the year 2000 when I got out of there. Even, that was about the oh, year wow. 2000. So that was 21 years ago. Holy hell. And that was 20, so that was about year 2000 I got out of uh, Wolverine. I got out of the boot camp. And I was out until about... I don't know. I was out maybe like nine months or something like that, six or nine months, and I violated my probation, you know, smoking, just getting fucked up, wanting to party, not going to school, you know, whatever I was doing. And then when did you end up at Holy Cross? So Holy Cross was like 1998. Okay, that was prior to that? That was prior to, that was prior to Teen Ranch when I escaped. Okay. Yeah. Now, this was your first one, right? The, or the second one, I guess, Yeah, right? no, this was the very first one. I mean, I had been to the juvenile center, but when they finally got tired of fucking catch and release... Uh, that got sent to this one to Holy Cross uh, Children's Services, Ugh. and but this back in the day was called Andre House. So they changed the name. Yeah, they changed the name because of the bad rap. Do you think or what? Well, the, well, they made it look uh, really nice. I don't know what happened, man. I mean, I think this is just wow. uh, like a random website. This is their website. 
I mean, yeah, they probably pay somebody to yeah, I'm sure make them a good website. But um, yeah, I was there, man. I was there for like uh like a year actually, from like I was 13 till I was 14. And it was horrible. I mean, total shit. I mean, I mean, you you've been to prison, dude. I was in the ghetto, and I was around. Like, listen, I, when I was 13 years old, I was I was in there for stealing cars, but like I wasn't like a hardcore gangster. Not at 13. You know what I mean? And like I'm small now, so imagine me at 13. I was like four foot eleven, four foot ten, me 80, 90 pounds. You know, what soaking I mean? wet, right? Yeah, you know, I wasn't. A, I was tiny, and um, I could barely see over the steering wheel of some of the cars I was stealing. So you know, imagine me being soft white bread from you know what I mean, not a, you know such a bad neighborhood, and do they put me down into the meat grinder with kids that were like between 15 and 18, and these kids were in there for carjacking violent fucking robberies, assault. Some of them were in there for murder, but they were just so young that they didn't know what to do with them. And this is the late 90s. This wasn't now where kids are just murdering everybody. You know what I mean? Like, this is late 90s. This is There was had there been one mass shooting. One. Not fucking one every other day as it is now. So it was like, you know, you were. I was just in there with a bunch of bad motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? And that's just... I. And I was at that impressionable age where I was like a sponge. You know, I'm soaking everything up. Because you, know you have saying? nobody else at the time. Yeah, I was 13 right. years old. So you're kind of like grabbing for some type of emotion. I was a baby. Or, like 13 years right. is nothing. That's fucking, that's, to be alive on this planet, that's nothing. No, and, and that's when you start to developing, you know, you're like on the borderline of puberty and, and also developing the brain and everything else. Yeah. So because you didn't have anybody at that time and <clears> you've <throat> already been through shit prior to this, you're sponging up everything you can get from anybody yeah. that will give it to you because yeah. you have nobody. Just I'm learning life lessons from just hardcore fucking gangsters from Detroit. Like young kids that are from like the east side of Detroit, west side of Detroit, and are fucking just out there. Mother and father are crack addicts, you know what I mean? Like just every stereotype you could imagine, um, I was in there with these kids, you know what I mean? And they were just like the worst of the worst. And that's what I learned everything from. That's where I, I learned my personality from. You know, the way I view the world, the way I deal with people I, I, at a very young age, I that's who I was learning from. Now, was back then, was Detroit like it is now? It was worse. It was worse than it is uh, now. Oh, listen, man, the late uh, 90s in Detroit? Well, I mean, hey, you came from there. You know more than me. Dude, the late 90s in Detroit was off the fucking... Look, from 96 to 98 in Detroit, that, that period of time was fucking insane. Worse than right now. Dude, the crack. The crack in Detroit from like the late ninety in the in the in the late nineties. I mean, it, in the eighties, the crack hit Detroit hard, but in the late nineties, it was an epidemic, man, and, and it was so crazy. Like everybody I knew was armed robbers. Everybody I knew was fucking. They were jacking. Everybody I knew sold crack. Everybody I knew were armed robbers. Like every day, somebody was getting killed. Like every day, it was like something. Every day, it was something, bro. What do you think's worse now, like today? Chicago or Michigan, Detroit? I don't know. I mean, I know if we looked up the murder rate right now, you, I, I, they would probably be neck and neck. Neck and neck, right? Mm -hmm. I have a friend that he wouldn't even take his kid to the subway. Kid loves the subway. Because yeah, the know, gang's are just whacking people to get credibility. Yeah, so, I don't even go to, like when I go to Chicago, I go to where I'm going and I go to a hotel room and I don't leave the hotel room. Yeah. At all. It's really Until it's time for me to leave and go in Uber and go back to the fucking, to the airport. Yeah. You know, and I'll be in the suburbs. I won't even be in the city. I'll be out in the fucking suburbs, and I'll still be like, yeah, and a lot of those fuckers, all that shit filters out here, you know what I mean? Yeah, because the cops don't want to deal with it, you know what I mean? So now somebody who's trying to get upped in a gang or whatever it may be, you know, the job yeah. is, okay, go whack somebody. Now we can trust you, we'll up you. So, and nobody's doing anything about it. It's fucking crazy out there. But Detroit's pretty bad, too, but I didn't know it was that bad. Detroit, man, Detroit's always been off the chain, dude. Detroit's fucking one of them cities where... Detroit's been off the chain since the 70s. Man, Detroit's... I mean, it's had a tumultuous history. It's entire... The length... Listen, Detroit was, in the 1950s, was like the idyllic, you know, American city where every, how, every home was like... Everybody was working, like everything was booming... Then the 60s came in and like all the black people started moving up because civil rights and all that shit was going on. All the black people started coming up from Detroit or from uh, Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi and all that shit. So they all moved up into Detroit. So all the white people took off. It was called it's it's literally called the Great White Flight. Really? Yes. Holy shit. It's in Detroit history. It's called the Great White Flight when all the white people left Detroit because white there's no white white people don't live in Detroit anymore. Like if you go to Detroit, it's predominantly black. Like sure there's white people here and there, but there's no white neighborhoods. There's no 
you know, communities in Detroit where it's, where you just see a lot of white people that you just don't. So, you know, when, when like I said, the, when the Great White Flight took place, um, that's when Detroit's down, that's when Detroit just started this down downward spiral all the way out of, out of nowhere into nothing, you know, and now it's just, it looks like Baghdad now. Literally, you go there and it looks like uh like a like it, it looks like a like world a fucking bomb hit. Yeah, it looks like Baghdad, man. Like there's just blocks of uh, like literally, you know, six or nine like city blocks that used to be thriving with houses and kids and parks are just gone now. Like entire, they just wiped them all out. Trash. Well, didn't that governor do? Uh, we talked about this before, but that one governor that was in there, a mayor, he was like buying the real estate and he, and he fucked the whole state. The, the guy. Come out, Kwame. Kilpatrick, Kwame Kilpatrick, um, or you're talking about Dave Bing. I don't know. I don't know. Even know about name one. He, then, he's the one who then, fucked up. And then up there the, was Mayor St. Thomas before. Fucking. I think it was St. Thomas because he, he was like buying properties yeah. and then laundering Listen, money through him and all this crazy he shit. He was he was corrupt and then Kwame was corrupt. Kwame went to prison, the yeah. federal prison, and then after Kwame, you got Dave Bing, and then I mean Dave Bing seems to be like a pretty it was good the Afri- guy. It was the uh, African American guy. They all have been African American. Oh shit. All right. Every mayor of Detroit. <laughs> really? <laughs> going Where back, are? yeah, going all the way back to fucking you know I don't fucking. Before Mayor St. Thomas, I'm sure it was another black guy, yeah. Oh, shit, wow. Yeah. I mean, I'm not really, you know, versed on my Detroit history. I know a little bit because I'm, you know, I'm from, you know, partially from there. But, um, yeah, Detroit's always been a war zone, man. You go down there, you get fucked with. Listen, when we, like, I hung out with a lot of kids from the suburbs, like, you know, north of 8 Mile. You know what I mean? Anything south of 8 Mile, you're in you're in Detroit. As soon as you go on this side of 8 Mile, it's, you know, it's a different county. So where did Eminem grow up? You remind me a in lot de- of them. In Detroit. We, we, like, we're kind of, we kind of come from the same... Like the same area? Or like, like where where did you grow up <clears throat> when you were there? Uh, I grew up all... So I lived in mostly in, in Macomb County. Okay, and where was he at? Wayne County. How far... What's the distance between the two? <clears throat> 15 miles, 10 miles. Oh, wow. So you guys were pretty close. Yeah, so he grew up on, on 8 Mile. So like, anybody knows Michigan, so 8 Mile Road is it's a dividing line between Wayne County and Macomb County. Wayne County is Detroit. Macomb County is, you know, like East Point and all the other cities. So once you cross over Detroit, you're in, you're, once you cross over 8 Mile, you're in Detroit. You're in, you know, <clears throat> the hood or whatever. And and that's where the 8 Mile movie, I assume. That's where the whole thing, from. that's where the whole 8 Mile thing came from with the movie and you know the trailer park. You know the trailer park they filmed Eight Mile Road in. I used to live in that trailer park. Wow. Yeah, I didn't live there when they were filming the movie, but I I I lived there at one point in time. And it's on Eight Mile and Ryan, in between a, a, a the Suez Motel and a fucking laundromat. In other words, you went through all of that. I would lived that life, man. I was yeah. out there broke, poor in Michigan. I lived in a trailer out there on Eight Mile Road with no electricity, and and it just only running water. And we had to run extension cords from the neighbor's house to plug in space heaters. You know what I mean? And then we built a tent in the living room out of blankets and the furniture, and we pulled the space heaters inside of there to heat it. I mean, we're talking Michigan winter, bro. We're talking 30 below zero in a, in a, in a tin can. You know those trailers are like yeah. fucking tin cans. Now, emotionally, how do you get through that? Like, like in, Dude, in your you heart. Dude, you just I'm, deal, man. You just you just go from one day to the next. You know, how am I going to stay warm? What am I going to eat? That's how you go. You just go from one bodily function to the next. The body adapts, right? Yeah. And yeah. then now you look at yourself and you're like, you know, you have uh, your, life is uh, good. an awesome studio. Life is you good. Know, a podcast is blowing up. Yeah, I'm driving and, a fucking new car. You know what I mean? Life is good right now. And we'll get back to, you know, how you grew up because it's very important, you know, because mm-hmm. uh, you, you've been through a lot of shit. But yeah. Yeah. it's just, it, it's got to be overwhelming to see where you were in these shitholes mm-hmm. to where you're at now. Yeah. You know, and people, yeah. they gave up on you and here you are. Yeah. Now you got your own place. I mean, you're in Arizona, you know. Yeah. You know. I'm doing. You're, my, I'm you're doing. doing my you're thing. doing your thing. Yeah, I definitely am. So now, who is this Clarence Thomas? Clarence Thomas Thompson or whatever his name is. Who? What? The guy. The the guy that this guy. Clarence Thomas. The fuck is his name? I'm doing a lot of fucking. No man, you're talking about. You're talking about this one. No man, go back. Nope. Yep. That was uh, the boot camp I was in. That was Wolverine. That was in Vassar, Michigan. That was the one out in the middle of the fucking woods. If you scroll down, I used to, those kids dressed right there like that, I used to, we I wore that jacket. That Those were the, that's in the wintertime, they give you those green jackets and those fucking, those Sorrells. They're, they're called Sorrells, the boots. So you were doing this? Yeah. Residents yeah. carrying a rug to be cleaned. They're kind of, what the fuck? Yeah. 
So now, how long were you there for? So, so scroll up a little bit. Let me read what it says underneath there. Sure. Uh, the CEO of Wolverine Human Services said government contracts forced a 274-bed campus in Vassar, Michigan, to accept use and with dangerous backgrounds and behavior. But today, the agency can turn away those use. So, yeah, you know, there are guidelines. I mean, they didn't really let violent offenders or anything like that in there when um, when I was there either. Yeah, those were it. Those were the bunks we slept in. So you in. slept in that right there? Yeah. Yeah. And how long were you at that one for? 14 months. Man. Yeah, I did that for 14 months out there in the woods. Now, when you walk out of there, then what happens? Where do you go from uh, there? Uh, that was about year 2000. And I got that was 21 years ago, man, year 2000. Um, I got out of there and I went to go. Fuck, I don't even remember what happened, man, when I got out of there. I was just fucking 20 years ago. You know it is I mean? part of that your life kind of like a blur. Yeah. Like, because there, there was so many places where I was in and I was out and I was in and I was out. I remember after this place, I was out for, I wasn't even out that long. Maybe like a year, I think I did good this time. Like, I remember after getting out of out of this one, it was the longest stretch I had been free since I was 12 or 13 years old. And when I got out of this one, I was like 16. So I had been incarcerated 10 or 11 months out of every year between the age of 13 when I was 19 years old. And nobody to turn to on top of that. No. Yeah, so there was like a six-year stretch where I was just incarcerated. Like from one Wolverine Human Service, Boysville, Boysville over here, fucking... You know, and eventually I ended up in that W.J. Maxi right there. Yeah. That and was, that I mean, was, that's like fucking prison. Dude, click on that fucking cell right there with the yellow wall. This one here? That's it, dude. That's where I slept every night. At how old? Mine was reversed, though. My bed was on the other side in the fucking... Ah, uh, I was 17 when I went there, 16 or 17, and they kept me there till my 19th birthday. Wow, man. Yep, so I was there almost two years, two and a half years in there. Yeah, those were the pods, all that shit, dude. I remember that place. Yeah, so I was there, and then, yeah, so, I, yeah, I had a long run there where I was incarcerated a lot, man, as a youth in one place like this or another all the way. So I had, like, a six-year run. I was out maybe, like, nine. I was out maybe, like, a month or two out of every year. I would just get out, and then I would just be – I was a teenager, and I would get out, and I would just be on a nut. You know what I mean? Now, when you're going through that at that age, like, now they – you're our, you know, you are where you are, mm. and you've accomplished what you have. Yeah. Emotionally, yeah. what effect do you think that this all has? Oh, devastating! Day? It's completely devastating. You know, it does. You don't learn how to fucking communicate properly. You don't learn how to be emotionally attached to humans. You don't learn because there's no human contact at the point in your time when you need human contact. You know, you don't learn how to. Uh, address the world properly like your world view like the sh like the your the, the the view you have of the world is decidedly shaped by the experiences you have in life and by the people you come in contact with can we st can we start there as like a fucking a foundation yeah. as a basis right so right. building on that uh you know i was just around the worst of the worst through all those all those years that those six most what I deem to be crucial years of my life, when you know, between the age when you first start going through puberty until you graduate high school, those are like some of the most important. Those are the most important years of your life. Right. Because everything is developing. That determines who you're going to be through your 20s yeah. and into your 30s and into your 40s. You know what I'm saying? So it's not a fucking uh, uh, a big surprise that I ended up in federal prison at the end of the day. You know what I mean? It's just lucky I didn't end up some kind of fucking weird gangbanger. You know what I mean? Or some fucking retarded ghetto thug that just fucking robs people, and you know what I'm saying? It just doesn't can't speak proper English. Yeah, at least you know you what can I mean. Speak I was and you kept fortunate. Your heart. You kept your heart. I was fortunate enough to be to actually educate myself throughout all of this. You know what I mean? And 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 figure out how to fucking act like a normal human being. But for a lot of people, that's just not the case. You know. Now, after going through that, how do you, how do you love? Like how how can you possibly? Oh, I, like are you able to even understand what love is, or you're just oh, numb? Dude, I'm a nightmare, dude. I yeah. mean, because it's not like you just went to one place. She went to one place after another, after, after another, another, and another, another problem, another problem, yeah, and yeah. family members leaving you, turning their back on you. Yeah, people that you loved. So how, you know, starting not at so an much early about age, not being able to love and being numb. It's just or about show not, it. Maybe. It's just about not trusting anybody. You don't. You can't trust nobody. Nope. Because once you trust somebody, then all the other stuff comes in fine with me anyway. That's just how I am. But because it's just, you won't, I'm not I don't fucking trust nobody. You open up the vulnerability, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, once you trust somebody, then you know it opens up all the, all that shit for me anyway. That's just how I am. But it's like I don't trust anybody. I don't fuck everybody. Everybody's out. Everybody has an agenda at the end of the day. Everybody has some kind of agenda that is self-serving. Everybody's just doing something to benefit their own benefit their own fucking situation or their own life or whatever they got going on. And I do that's just human nature. It is what it is. I agree with you, but it's different if they have an agenda, but also give a fuck, right? <clears throat> no, that's true, yeah. So, like, me and you were hanging out. But yeah, you're you know, my buddy. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't, you know, you help me, I help you. Mm, yeah. But we both have an agenda with each other. Well, but it's not the same thing. Yeah. Right. I'm talking about people who are, are like, self or go have, like, a hidden agenda. Yeah. Like me and we'll fucking be like, yes, exactly, just to fucking, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, and... You know, the one thing about Florida is that there is the worst manipulated motherfuckers down here that you will ever see in your life. <clears throat> what? That? Yeah, that's right. You grew up here. I grew up here. That's I mean, why I'm a con are... man because I fucking grew wow. up here. Wow. Wow. You know, I come from Pennsylvania and Jersey, New York. I've never seen anything like this. I mean, yeah. this is the worst. Yeah. These fuckers will wait around three, four years to fuck you. Yeah. And they really will. Yeah. And they'll play your ass. And that second they get that opening. Florida's oh, nuts. It is nuts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the taxes are good. You know, it's wide open right now. But mm -hmm. the fucking people, they'll cross you in two seconds. So when you get into a relationship again, I mean, how mm -hmm. can you love somebody again? That, that, that's what, because I've never seen anybody like really open up about it. Like, you know, that has been through, I know you weren't in a mm -hmm. boy's home or foster home or whatever. Yeah. So. No, I listen. I, you know, I, I listen. Love for me is not, not the issue. Like I said, it's the trust. Yeah, I probably, yeah. It's the you know trust what I'm saying. Issue, That's right. the main thing with me. It's like, dude, what you know what I mean? Like, if I can't trust you, it's just hard for me to trust people. You know, women, anybody. Like, I'm my own mom. Everybody. Like, I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? I look out for myself, and I always make sure that I got all my pieces lined up so that I'm gonna be all right. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's all I can do. So how how do you get over that though? Right? Because I mean, or I mean, somebody watching that maybe has been know, through man. a similar thing. I mean, how how do you? I'm not doctor. I'm not Dr. Phil, dude. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm fucking just, <laughs> I'm like a blind man fucking, you know, with a, with a very dim flashlight fucking in the dark. I think your, your flashlight's a little bit brighter than you think. <laughs> I don't know, you man. Know. I really don't know at this point. Yeah. Well, I think you, you know, if you can get through it, you could help a lot of people because you're not the only one. You know, I know people that yeah. get through this shit and they're all fucked up. Yeah. And usually they turn to drugs. Like I'm talking hardcore drugs, not fucking weed. Yeah, you know, I, I've never, whatever that is inside of people that makes them get addicted to, like, the hardcore shit, I've never, I've, I just don't have that inside of me. I don't, I've never had that problem, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't get addicted to things. I've never been on, like, crack or heroin. I've never even done crack or heroin. Or, like, I don't fuck with meth. Like, I just don't like the hardcore shit. Like, I'm so um, hypochondriac about, like, I don't even take aspirin. Or nothing, because I think I'm like having like an a, 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 a reaction to it. You know what I mean? Like I just that yeah, you get anxiety. I, there's no way in, on, on hell I could ever do hard drugs. It would be the end of me. Like I would fucking unravel. You know what I mean? As a fucking human, like there's no way. So yeah, like I just don't have that inside of me. Like whatever that addictive, you know, shit is, I just don't have it. I mean, I, like I still have to smoke weed every. Well, you know how that. I mean, I guess yeah. I do maybe a little bit because marijuana is my. Well, like, uh, you know, I've been around you. Days and weeks, mm -hmm. you know, at a time. Yeah, that's like you're like, you know, anti-anxiety legally, yeah. and it's yeah. you're not gonna get addicted to it. You yeah. might want it, but I don't even drink, man. Like I don't yeah. even drink. I, I've never seen you have a drink. No, I don't. I haven't had a drink in two years. How many times have I seen you in six months? Ten, twelve? Yeah, a lot for like three or four days at a clip. I've never seen you. Have no, a drink. I don't drink. I don't drink at all. I've never seen you drink once. No. Yeah. But, but I have seen you without the marijuana. And I'm a fucking mess. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm fucking just a ball of a fucking anxiety and stomach pains. And, like, I get this cloud in my head where I can't think and can't process thoughts and emotions. And But what but what Big Pharma wants to do is give you pills. No. Where you can take something that. natural. Yeah, yeah, at the end no, of the day, it's I'm fucking not. natural, right? Yeah, I'm not, I'll, I'll never go on medication. Fuck that. Like, I do messing with the chemicals in your brain, that, to me, is like... Right. <laughs> Dude, you don't know what's gonna happen. Dude, I was watching this commercial the other day, uh, and actually it wasn't the other day. I was in a hotel room in Chicago like a week ago, and I was watching this commercial, and it was for Chantix, and it was for this drug that for to help you quit smoking. You take it, and one of the side effects is suicidal thoughts. 
That's nice. You might you so you can quit smoking, but I might commit suicide. So this this drug might fucking push you to the point where you commit suicide. Suicidal thoughts is one of the side effects. You remember that acting drug? What the fuck was it called? Start with an A. Uh, there was an act acting drug. I forget what the hell it was called, but it was like kids were taking you know to get rid of the, the Adderall. No, no, acne, acne, like when oh, they pimples. Oh, acne. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I forget what the fuck it was called. But people, like, kids were taking it, you know, because, you know, 13, 14, you go right. through the puberty. Yeah, like yeah, we're yeah. Talking about, And they were killing themselves. Really? Like, literally just killing themselves. Wow, making them depressed. Yeah, making them depressed, just getting them out, of the, like, just making them think, like, yeah. really weird thoughts and shit like that. Yeah. But, see, Big Pharma hates that shit because they can, you could just do a plant, they came from the earth, yeah, and smoke marijuana and <clears throat> yeah. Well, I think there's a lot of alternatives, you know, CBD, and then there's you know. Do you think CBD really does? Anything? I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah. I've I don't remember, I've never messed with it myself. You know what I mean? So I have no idea. But they don't want that though. See, they want you to go to the doctor, and then they code it, and then the PCP says, "Okay, John, you need Xanax." Well, now you're addicted to Xanax. Yeah, right? dude, that's a bad motherfucker there. Now you can't remember shit. So now they're gonna get you off the Xanax, and they're gonna put you on Klonopin. Now eventually you're gonna, you know, you're gonna have to go to the withdrawal. <laughs> yeah. Now they, now oh, John, you're depressed. Paxil, this, that, the other one. Lithium, before valium. you know it, <laughs> before you know it, you're a fucking walking robot, yeah. and your insurance, if yeah. you have it is paying God knows how much to Big Pharma. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have it, you're paying out of pocket. So they don't like things like marijuana, Provigil, Modafinil, you know, mm -hmm. it's my thing. Mm -hmm. They don't like that because that does things that you're not going to eat. You know, if you get on Modafinil, what are you going to, if you stop smoking weed, what are you going to take to stop smoking weed? No, I don't know what would happen if I quit smoking pot. But, I mean, like, if you were on Xanax for a year... You got to get on something. You can't just stop. You're going to go through You'll hell. You'll have seizures, right? You can you can die. Yeah. It's not like alcohol you can die from. Um, benzos, like the, like detoxing off benzos is a rough one. You can have seizures for sure. Yeah, seizures for sure, and it's a rough one. Alcohol is the only withdrawal that oh, you can actually die from. Oh, what do they call it, the benz? The, uh, yeah. The, well, DTs? DTs, yeah. yeah. Um, it's like when you shake Dude, like, I've been in the county jail and, and fucking with motherfuckers going through that shit. <sighs> From what the Shake, alcohol? Yeah, well, it's a bad, it's a bad month. Shaking yeah. and pissing and shitting and throwing up and yeah, yeah. But that's what they want, though. You know, that's what they want because, in my opinion, before weed or anything else, and I think you'd agree with me. I mean, you can go anywhere you want and get alcohol. Mm -hmm. That is the worst fucking drug that there is. Mm -hmm. First off, you can die from it. It the ruins bad people's life. Dude, listen, I quit. I quit drinking because I've had alcohol poisoning four times in my life, where I've had to go to the hospital and get put on IVs and pump fucking bags. Of saline solution into me because I'm fucking so dehydrated. Charcoal. I never. They never did the charcoal, but they did fucking. Um. They did. I did some stuff where I had to f shit, and it fucking was like whoom, and it pushed everything out of me. And I had to do that twice. And yeah, dude. I and 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 dude. I, I like. I was never like a daily drinker. You know, I wasn't one of those guys who drank every day, but I was a binge drinker. So when I got going, I would do. I would drink for three days straight, like straight, and I would barely eat anything, and I would barely drink any water, and I would just be boozing, hardcore liquor. I'd be at like the casino, get a room at the casino, and I would just drink and gamble for three days, you know. Go back to the room, order a bottle of Jack, and I'd have an eight ball up there. Oh, you're I, drinking hard liquor. Yeah, I would fucking Ooh. Jack and Coke. I would, I'd have an eight ball in the room, and I'd fucking <laughs> go up there and I'd get a order a bottle of Jack from room service. I do fucking, you know, like fucking a gram and a half of Coke and fucking a half a fucking bottle of Jack. And I'd go back down to the casino floor with my shades on. I don't know what, because they don't put no clocks or fucking windows in those places. So you don't know what fucking day it is. And I'm just down there on a sick one fucking just gambling. You know, I had a bunch of money. I used to do that shit in Vegas, so, dude. So the Coke will lift you up from the liquor, right? It'll keep you balanced out, keep you going, because yeah. the liquor will fucking put you down on the ground, and the Coke will take you too fucking high. It so will zip you. you. So you get you find that balance of the two. but And so then after I, and so then when I would quit, so I would do that for two or three days, usually over a weekend, start usually on Friday morning and go all the way till Sunday night, Monday morning, and then fly back to wherever I was going. And, dude, I remember, so I remember some of those flights back from Vegas were fucking... Dude, shaking in the airplane seat, fucking they having that bag they put. I would fucking be throwing up in the bag that they put in the back of the fucking seats of the airplane, just sweating like a motherfucker because all the cocaine and the booze, and I haven't slept in three days, and I'm trying to sleep on the airplane. And dude, I had a lot of those flights, man. A lot of those flights. 
And what's so crazy about the alcohol is you take one drink, it all goes away. Dude, and then that, that's oh, why man. it's the worst shit in the world. Dude, the hangovers were the worst for me, dude. Like feeling like being sick for three days. I don't. Yeah. I just. I can't go. I can never put my body through that again. Like when I when I would be like not being able to talk, because uh, the next day, a couple days after partying, like like literally like that can't get. That's when I knew it was time to stop. Like I, if I couldn't if I couldn't talk, I couldn't even form a sentence, and like I would go to pick something up and it would fucking. No, it's time to stop, dude. It's time to stop doing the cocaine and stop boozing. I quit doing cocaine probably in 2000, and the last time I did cocaine was probably 2000, and fuck. I was, I it's was, been such a long I time. I was always so scared to do it because from <sighs> the time I was probably 16, 17, I used to take uh, Zenadrine RFA1, Hydroxy Cup with yeah. the Ephedrine. Oh, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Mohan, the good shit. Attack. The good shit. You have a heart attack. No, you don't have a heart attack. You have, um, you have I, I probably, the last time I probably did cocaine was probably about 2008. 2007, 2008, when I was still fucking doing the credit cards and I was still partying. I remember one of the last times I ever did cocaine, uh, I was at the Seminole Hard Rock Casino uh, in Hollywood, Florida. And, uh, man, I just remember fucking doing a lot of cocaine. And I remember, like, my heart. And I remember, like, dude, this is going to be it. And we were driving around, and I was in the back of somebody's fucking uh, Range Rover. And I got my head out the window, and I was just going in and out. Like, cause I was so high on cocaine. Like, I was just, I would go out and I would come back and I would be like, <laughs> and fucking just like, I would go out and come back, dude. And it was just like, I remember that being that, I remember that incident being like, I can, I just can't do cocaine anymore because I just, I don't, when I get on it, I abuse the fuck out of it. Like, I can't, I don't know how to stop because I get excited and I'm just doing bumps here and bumps. I don't do a lot at once. So I do a little bit, but I, I just forget how much I do and I, and I just keep blowing through little baggies and, yeah, that was fucking... But it was like... It wasn't like an everyday thing. It was only when I was drinking. And I only drank when I was out partying. Like, I would just go out, like, randomly. You know what I mean? It wouldn't even be once a month or once a week. It would just be like, we going to Vegas this weekend? I guess we are. But you would go three days straight <laughs> drinking, right? And then you would go through Three health. or four days, yeah. So how, how could you... How were you able to deal with that? Like, you know, you stop after three <sighs> or four days. Dude, I'd be so you're sick. dying. And you I'd be so through. sick. And that was enough to make me quit. That was enough to make me like not want to do that shit anymore. So yeah, I quit doing cocaine in like 2008 or something like that. And then I quit drinking for good about two and a half years ago. <clears throat> and how much, like when you decided to quit drinking, how much were you drinking a day, would you say? Or well, when you would go to drink on like the binges or whatever you want to call them. Like when, bottles. What, bo- like fists hmm. or, ha- or handles. <laughs> bottles. Yeah, I was drinking fifths, man. I would drink in a day. Um, oh yeah, I would drink. We would. I would go through two bottles in in, a, in like I start partying on like a Friday, and we just start pouring drinks. And you could drink a handle in a day. That's a half. Dude, pound. I was drinking. No, I was drinking a fifth of liquor. I could drink a fifth of liquor to myself in one day for sure, for sure in one day. And I listen, listen. I would just carry pints around with me all day, and I would just hit. I would have like a coke, and like a pint of rum, and I would just hit the hit the fucking pint and hit the coke. And just fucking all day long, just driving around, fucking hanging out. And it, that would just be my thing. I would just bomb, bomb, hit it and fucking. So I keep that little buzz going all day. You know what I mean? Just to get you through the day, right? Well, it wasn't like I wasn't, I would never go through withdrawals. I've never been through withdrawals from alcohol. Like it never got to that point. Like I never went through the DTs. I never went through the withdrawals. If alcohol. you're shaking and can't hold a bottle, that's, you, that's yeah, alcohol, man. It is, it is, but it was only for like a day. You know no. what I mean? Like, so, so if I would binge for three or four days, I would be, I would have one day where I was fucked up, where I was shaking and I was sick, just from all the, you know what I mean? Yeah, just like from, everything needs. Dude, to get it just out wreaks of you. havoc on your body, yeah. your fucking, your metabolism, your blood pressure, your fucking, your stomach, your your <clears throat> everything. Excuse me. See, I, I can see that with you because you like you're like for people I'm that small, don't know, man. you could give this guy ten fucking large pizzas a day, and I don't think you would gain more than two pounds. Yeah, I don't. So I just don't. Yeah. But you're blessed, you know. Yeah. Whatever that means, but. You know, so you're, you, I was your boozing, metabolism man. probably just flies through yeah. it. But yeah, I would be, I was a boozer, man. Like, I was fucking, like, and like I said, I wasn't an everyday drinker. You know, I would just go on like three or four day benders and then, and stop, go to the withdrawal and then do it again. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, a month or two later, fucking, you'll be partying and fucking drink for four or five days again. Yeah. And then be dying again for another Oh, and just be fucking, yeah, fucked up. So I just quit, man. Like I said, I quit doing cooking cocaine in the, in like mid, mid 2000s, 2008 to something like that. And then, I quit drinking about two and a half years ago for good. Yeah, but I smoke. So, I smoke pot every day. So, so what? 
<laughs> from the time I wake up, I usually fucking get high. And yeah, I don't know how you do it all day. I mean, I'm impressed with that. Yeah, well, I'm, when I'm at the shop, I don't really get high that much. I mean, I still do, but like I'll go out and I'll have one or two puffs just to change my head and I'll come back in. And fucking... Well, I think like your beta antagonists, they needed to fire correctly. Like I think you absolutely like you medically need it. I you know, so. not you to get high it. because you yeah. don't act fucked up. It, it just, but if you don't have it, I've seen you not have it. You're fucking sweating. You're yeah. uncomfortable, you, you you know, and it's yeah. not like a withdrawal thing. It's to it's, me, it's anxiety because I can relate to it because I have extreme anxiety. I used to call my mom all. I, I you know, mm -hmm. I was doing things I shouldn't be doing, you know, twenty years ago, and I would get these fucking anxiety attacks, and I'd have to pull over and call my mom because I'd be shaking. I thought I was gonna have a fucking heart attack. Mm -hmm. It's a nightmare. And then I went to, uh, I tried that fucking Xanax shit. I did that for three days and couldn't remember shit. I'm like, fuck this shit. I'm not doing this. And then, you know, I eventually went to, uh, uh, I, t I did Volume, I think, for two weeks. Only two weeks. You mean Valium? Valium. Yeah. Valium, yeah. And it, like, leveled me out. Yeah. And then I went to uh, Modafinil, Provigil. Yeah. And ever since then, you know, I... Yeah, I never it, got on any of the prescription medications or anything. No, yeah. never. Even when, they, even when I was a kid, they never put me on, like, Ritalin or none of that shit. Like, I've never, I've ne never been medicated, you know? That's interesting because now they're, they're yeah, like, I know. like this. I know. Gave it's strange, right? They just never recommended medication for me when I was yeah. when I was growing up ever. So, like, I was never medicated as a child. And then I remember as an adult, uh, I've never seeked professional help. Like, I've never ha gone anywhere and been like, yo, I'm going to kill myself, so please give me medication. Like, I've never gone through that. So, even as an adult, I was n I've never been medicated. Like, I've never taken... Um, Adderall or fucking, you know, uh, lithium or anything for mood stabilizers or fucking any, any, what do they call them? Anti, uh, antidepressants. Yeah, antidepressants. And then anti there's, uh, anti, yeah. anti social, anti tropics or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. So uh, new, new tropics. New tropics. I've yeah. never been on any of that shit. Nothing ever. It's only been weed for me my whole entire life. And that's just what works for me. And it probably would work for a lot of people if, yeah. if you know, things are different because that, that's what they, have you ever seen like a, a younger kid like in high school in Ritalin? You can take a ha I, I've seen it with my own eyes. A happy yeah. kid smiling all the time. There's been studies done that with marijuana, you're not you're not really supposed to give marijuana to children while their brains are developing. You know what I mean? So that's why it's not really good to medicate kids with marijuana. Now, if they have like some serious fucking like where they have like epileptic seizures, then you give them the oil. But it's like you know, really, kids ki ki shouldn't really be giving kids fucking pot until they're like, until their brains are fully developed, and then you know. But what's worth? Pot or you're right. Uh, fucking what's the fucking narcotic uh, fucking what's Ritalin? The, what's where, the, where what's you turn the Ritalin? Kid into a fucking you're right. Zombie. What's the what's the Ritalin doing to him? That the pot that you know what I mean. So you're right. There is a trade off there. I don't know. You're right. It's a good question. Yeah, I mean, it turns him into there's a, a, fucking a lot of zombie. um there's a lot of uh um you know what's the word I'm looking for. Well, it, the, a lot of bullshit is what yeah. it is. You know because there's a lot of philosophical questions. There you go. Yeah. Right. And I mean. Now, but what happens now is the parents go to, you know, the doctor and say, hey, he won't sit still. Mm -hmm. He's a fucking boy. What do you want him to do? Sit in a chair? Yeah. No little kid's going to sit in a chair. He's driving. And they then look at the kids' diets. Yeah. They well, gas them up on sugar. Yep. All these kids are gassed up on fucking sugar. And then you expect them to sit still. Yeah. And then right? you put them in a classroom with a bunch of other kids that are gassed up on sugar. And there's it's going to be one giant fucking, you know what I mean? Then the kid comes home, right? The iPad wears out. No longer suits him. Yeah. Oh, you have to go to the doctor. Hey, he won't sit still. She won't sit still. I can't deal with him. Okay, well, here's Ritalin. And the parents yeah. are like, oh, thank God. Yeah. Now, the kid's a fucking zombie. Doesn't know how to even fucking talk to anybody. Completely different personality than he or she was prior to this shit. But the parents went there and got it. And the doctor was more than happy to throw it to mm -hmm. the kid, knowing that later he, he's going to have to prescribe this and that and the other. Mm -hmm. And it's a shame because, and going back to what you do, is that you could just hit the fucking indica and you're not going to turn into a zombie. It's not going to change your personality. Yeah. I've literally seen it happen to a kid where he was the happiest kid, laughing, smiling, energy like a man has. Mm -hmm. Got on that Ritalin, miserable. Wanted to fight everybody, wouldn't talk to nobody. I mean, it was, it was like night and day between the two. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. You listen, giving kids chemicals uh, while they're going through all those changes chemically and, and, and emotionally, when dude, it's not good. It's not good, man. You know, there could be, there's long term effects that are gonna yet to be seen with all that shit. I think. Yeah, 
and I also know a lot of people that have been through foster homes and they don't have the the way you present yourself, mm -hmm. like the way you speak, you know, mm -hmm. they're fucked up. Oh, I'm lucky. Yeah. I got some friends yeah. who went through it that their their parents kind of dumped them off. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I still know them, man. You know, they're friends of mine and they're good people. But you can tell that, you know, just you can tell that they're fucked up. And I don't mean fucked up like a bad person, just that emotionally they are fucked up. And they went to one foster care, maybe two, not what you've gone through. Yeah. And for you to have the the speech that you have, it's pretty impressive. If somebody who knows somebody who's been mm -hmm. through somewhat what you've been through. Yeah. yeah. And as I was talking to earlier, I've never seen you not clean. You're probably one of the cleanest motherfuckers I've ever seen. Always shaved. To the yeah. Tip. Uh huh. Yeah. I, I've never even seen you with the five o'clock shadow. You were talking about that last night. I've never seen it. Yeah, I um, I I I hold myself to a, a different standard, I think, than which most people do. You know what I mean? There's a lot of things I'm just not willing to compromise on. You know, and then one of my pers my physical appearance is just one of those. You know, my vehicle is another one. My car is always clean inside and out, spotless. You know, my where I live is spotless inside and out. I wake up, I make my bed every single morning before I do anything else. I make my bed. You know what I mean? So there's just certain things I do in my life that I'm not willing to compromise on, you know. And and it makes me happy and I, 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 I feel like I'm always presenting myself to the world in the best possible light so that way any opportunity that comes my way or that, you know, if somebody sees me and they're like, oh, this guy's well put together, you know what I mean? Like maybe he's you know, somebody we want to fuck with, so. I remember the first time I met, well, I hadn't met you yet, but mm -hmm. I saw who you were. You know, I had talked to you, and I go, oh, boy, this is going to be something else. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh, boy, well, let's see how this is going to go. Not, you know, not having spoken to you, just seeing all the tattoos and yeah. everything else, and I'm thinking, oh, boy, this is going to be interesting. And you come in, and you blew my fucking mind with the intelligence. Mm -hmm. I tell you this all the time. Yeah. I could not, I mean, I was, you threw me the fuck back. You know, not that I'm a, I'm, people, I'm a peanut, I'm a piece of shit. But people don't expect me to, nah, you first of all, speak properly with, you know, good English and a vocabulary. But B, they all, all don't, don't also don't expect me to be intelligent at all. You know, they expect me to be some kind of ghetto retard, you know, that can barely speak yeah. English and fucking, you know, doesn't know how to read or write. So you spoke well, but then... I, I, the first one or the second one we did when we went like deep mm -hmm. and you could like you had like an open mind and you had uh, like the brain capacity and like you knew what I was talking about mm -hmm. and then we were going back and forth about the brain and the way it fires and atoms and shit like that mm -hmm. I mean you fucked me up because looking at you you wouldn't think that you'd be like uh, here's a fucking gangster from fucking LA yeah, or a, yeah exactly a uh, white boy uh, that wants to be an African I get under I get underestimated yeah. a lot which is fine with me because listen nobody that gives you the benefit they though. never see me coming that's, that's, they never see me coming I didn't see you coming yeah and you know you know what I've been through and I yeah. I didn't see it and I it threw me the hell back I mean Jesus and I always tell people I say look this fucking guy is one of the most smartest guys I've ever met in my life you know, I had the guy in that uh, disputed the Big Bang Theory. Mm -hmm. you, you, you can't you can't fight that. Mm -hmm. And many other things that the galaxy never begins and never ends. Um, and he's working with Elon. Mm -hmm. you know? And remember we were talking about that before when we had the sunglasses on and all that crazy shit? Yeah. You know, so yeah. just the intelligence level that you have is is huge. Uh, you know, I, I don't know, man. I don't really, honestly, I don't really feel like I'm that intelligent. I just, I have an ability to memorize things and then kind of regurgitate that, uh, that information when it's, um, you know, kind of just convenient for me. You know, I just, I mem I just memorize everything. I, anything I see, hear, read, or write, uh, I just, I retain that information. And I think that's, I think that's what a lot of people think is, think I'm intelligent for, but I just, I don't know. I don't really think so. I think intelligence is like problem solving and coming up with original ideas on how to solve, you know, major complex problems. And, you know, those, that's like, to me, that's fucking on intelligence. You know, I just, I don't feel like I have that, you know, I mean, I know I'm creative and, but at the end of the day, I'm just a, I'm just a good copycat. Like I'm just being, I can, I can look at something and I can recreate it or I can figure out how to do it. And that's just, that's my, where all my brilliance is. John, you reconned that fucking house off of YouTube videos. I did, yeah. I, I would put a lot of money on the table that there's not many people with no experience that could do that. Well, I mean, you know, it's like, here's a hammer, here's a nail. You fucking, you know what I mean? Like, you just 
fucking we're but, not fucking cavemen. We just figure it out. You right, know what right, I mean? But, like, it, but it's the patience and having to go. Yeah, right. Because right. you know, there's not many people. Listen, a lot of people are fucking dummies, and they just fucking sit around jerking off and smoking pot and playing Call yeah. of Duty. You know what I mean? That's the majority of the people out there in the world. You know. Well, especially with their nice check that's coming to them every. Oh well, you know that's that's that's, that's a whole other fucking. Yeah, thing. that's a whole other. That's a whole. Other I, I deal with that. Yeah, I deal with that enough. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. I'm done with that shit. Yeah, get Roger Stone back in here to talk about that nah, shit. Oh, oh, <laughs> I, you know what? The, you know what, what? What they're doing to him is fucked up. I don't care if you're Democrat or Republican. Yeah. Yeah, you got real. Yeah, I, I'm either. I'm independent. You know, I whoever's good for the country is who I'm for. I don't. Mm. I don't give a fuck about party. But what yeah. they're what they're doing to this fucking guy, he don't deserve that shit, man. Yeah. Walking out, fucking pointing a gun to his wife's head over lying to the FBI. Mm-hmm. What does his wife have to what to make a scene? Yeah, it's fucked up, man. Yeah, I uh, unfortunately I'm not really versed on the particulars of that. Yeah, no, it's just I talk to him, but yeah. you know, but you know, you've been through it. We both have had our uh, fun times, yeah. you know, and for that it's just fucking crazy. But you know. It's interesting, and it is you know, interesting. Yeah, yeah, and and the, and the battle goes on. You know, yeah. who, who the fuck knows what will happen with that? Yeah, but I'm a dummy man. At the end of the day, I don't really know. It's better. It's better yeah. because I, I see a lot of people get stuck in that wormhole with this politics shit. I mean, I don't. I don't even watch the news anymore. Oh, I don't either. No, I, don't I used to wake up and put the news on. I don't, watch I don't give a fuck what's going Maybe. on as long as it doesn't affect me directly. Like you know, if we're not, if it's. You know, I mean, there's some things I keep an eye on. Believe me, I keep an eye on things. Don't yeah. don't get me wrong. I'm paying attention to everything going on in the world and, you know, geopolitics and the policies that are being passed and, you know, what's going on with the economy and the shutdown and the COVID and the fucking... I pay attention to all of it, but I I don't let it affect me in any way, shape, or form. You know what I mean? It's just yeah, like... Yeah, I think, like, you take a glance. I watch it. I pay attention to what's going on. And you walk away. Yeah, because, you know, you got to pay attention to what's going on or else you get caught with your pants down. You yeah, know? right. You got to know what's coming. You know, yeah. yeah, yeah. Would you get the vaccine right now? I'm not getting the vaccine. No, I'm not getting Period. vaccinated. I'm asymptomatic, first of all. That's right, you are. You know what I mean? I, I was, I was, I, I tested positive uh, three times for COVID. I went to t- two different places. I uh, went to twice at one place and thought it was a mistake. So I went to a different place and got tested. Uh, all times came positive. I had no symptoms at all. And the apartment I shared with my cousin and his fiance, they both had COVID and they were both sick, real sick. You know what I mean? For weeks. So uh, I'm asymptomatic and I found this out early on in the pandemic. So it was like, I don't live my life COVID conscious because it doesn't affect me. So I don't really care about like, you know, washing my hands constantly and wearing a mask everywhere I go and being around people. Like I've been flying this whole time every week, literally every week through the whole pandemic through the, I remember being, I remember, listen, I remember before things started opening up now. I remember being in airports and it was like fucking like the rapture had happened. Like, you know what I mean? Like just fucking nobody in the airport. Like I've got, listen, I took a flight from Phoenix to out here one time and there was nine people on the airplane. Yeah. I remember it was wide open. Nine yeah. people on the entire airplane <laughs> for the whole flight. So like, I've been just traveling around during this whole thing. Like I don't give a fuck. I honestly don't because, so why should I get the, why should I put something into my body that could potentially fucking fucking, I could have a side effect and fucking get fucked up yeah. when I don't even need it. And I don't give a fuck. And they could take that pa- that vaccine passport and shove it straight up their fucking asshole. What's the vaccine passport? Oh, you know. Oh, no, nah, I told you. I, I glanced dude, at the market. They're, they're talking about some crazy shit to where if you don't get the vaccine and you're part of this passport program where they link it to your driver's license or some shit, you can't get into sporting events. You might not be able to get on an airplane. Companies can refuse you to get into their fucking businesses. All kinds of crazy shit. It's going to be like that little star the Jews had to wear back during the fucking Holocaust and World War II. Do you think they can do it in four years, though? What's that? Like, pass all this. They could do it in six months. But, I mean, do you think that they will? I don't know, man. I'm not getting that shit. I'm not getting that shit either, dude. I don't give a fuck. Because I, I've I seen think, people I that think age- if not enough people get vaccinated, they're going to pass some kind of passport. Some kind of, If not enough people. But, dude, 100 million people have already been vaccinated, uh, supposedly. There's only 300 million people in the, in, the, in the country. So if 100 million have been vaccinated already and it, 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 they just started the rollout of the vaccine... I think well, I think we're gonna be all right. I don't think they're gonna have to implement anything like that. And if they do, they can go fuck themselves because I'm not doing it. Well, if they do, it's just and if they do, control. and that's all. I'll have a fucking vaccine passport and guarantee without the vaccine. <laughs> I don't. I'll know. have one. Yeah. Well, I'm not kidding. Here it is, right here. Yep. Let me in. I've seen those vaccines fuck people up. You know what they? Yeah, I'm not doing it. No, they fucking hit your auto auto immune. Dude, system. they shut down the Johnson and Johnson because it was causing blood clots. Yeah. 
And that's just one. Yeah, they resumed it again. Yeah, because they tweet to fuck a molecule, yeah. Well, what happens 20 years from now or 15 years from now? When, yeah, I'm not fucking with that. When, when, when your body's fighting your own... your own. Yeah, listen, I, 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 I just... I feel like I bypassed this whole COVID thing, dude. Like, I just... It's so qu- it's so weird, man. Like a vi- like a plague sweeps the planet, and I'm immune pretty much. Well, it's your time now. But how if you weren't immune, you won't be able to be making the movie. Listen, I remember in the beginning when I before I figured out I was asymptomatic, dude. I was fucking terrified. I was like, dude, I I could fucking possibly die from this shit, and you know what I mean. Like I was scared, you know what I mean. And then like the whole thing popped off, and now I'm like, you know, fuck fuck these masks and fucking you know fuck you guys. I get to go where I want. It's weird, man. It's fucking weird. But I don't think anybody dies from it that doesn't have a pre-existing condition. To me, it's I don't it, know, man. It's, <clears throat> it's one of those weird things, dude. Where I I I've known people who who have been in the ICU when they got when they got when they got COVID and tested positive. I know people. One of the guys I worked with, one of the guys that would tattoo at my tattoo shop, was in the ICU on a ventilator. Is he alive? He's fine now, but dude, he said he didn't know he. They were bringing everybody in. They were like making him say his goodbyes and everything, because it came down to like one or two days where if he didn't turn for the better within this day or two, it would have been over. And he was on a ventilator and everything. He's like, dude, that shit fucked me up, and it killed his uncle. Which the ventilator so, is the worst thing to give you. Am I correct? Well, the ventilator was keeping him alive. Oh, okay. I I thought they were. Again, I glanced at the, the shit. The ventilator is that they put the tube down your throat and it's breathing for you. Okay. Because you can't breathe on your own. Right. Because, yeah, it only has So, one. yeah. And then and then somebody like me, I get it, and nothing. Not even a, a sore throat, a cough, a headache, nothing. Nothing at all. Well, you're asymptomatic, so you wouldn't know anyway. You're, right. Your body has that mechanism so it's like to fight it off. So it's like everybody's biome in, uh, they have inside of them is different. Right. Everybody's different. You know, the, your gut bacteria is different than my gut bacteria. I'm allergic to penicillin. If I can take penicillin, I'm fucked. So I can't take penicillin, moxicillin, none of that shit. I got to take some shit called... Uh, oh, you can't take a moxicillin? Nothing. None of the cillins. Zethromax? It's called erythromycin or... I, that fucks... That gives me diarrhea. Yeah, that's, that's It bad. fucks me up bad. Yeah. And then... Or I got to take something called Keflex. Ke- oh, Keflex. 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 Yeah, yeah Keflex. Yeah, capsule. Yeah. Capsule. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. antibiotic. Yeah. Ke- yeah. Keflex. Yeah. Keflex isn't bad, but the yeah. other one's terrible. Yeah. yeah. The erythromycin. That's a bad Fuck motherfucker. That. I had an, I had an infection in my tooth and that erythromycin. Fuck, dude. Yeah. And they, they gave it to me in the feds, dude, when I was in Coleman. Dude, that shit fucked me up when I was in there. Keflex man. is okay. Erythromycin? Fuck that. Yeah. So, but you can probably take penicillin if you get an infection or something. Yeah. And you'll be fine. Yeah. yeah I've taken amoxicillin. I, I, I rarely just, get sick. Yeah. It's, it's, different people have different reactions to different medications. So, of course, different viruses are going to affect people different ways. That's why all those like nutrition values and the guidelines, like when you get your blood tested, that's it's such a rough shit. That's a rough, loose, very loose. Wow. Well, <laughs> wow. Well, well, here's the deal. You know what I mean? This will fuck you up. So, when you look on the back of like this bottle order that doesn't say anything, when it says, you know, uh, standard is 1,200 calories a day or 2,000 calories a day, that was put into place for the military. They wanted to figure out how much food they had to send mm. to the military to stay to survive for, say, you know, a month. Mm. That's what the guidelines. When you look on the back of anything that you eat, and this is 60 percent, blah, blah, blah. That's just been around for like 50 years. And that was... Those numbers are based on the military. It has nothing to do with now. They're just yeah. too lazy to go the fuck back and do it right. Yeah. And like you just said, when I get my blood taken, let's say that my testosterone is 1,000 and yours is 2,000. That doesn't mean you're fucked up if you don't have any symptoms. Mm-hmm. You genetically might be like that. So, so, so dig this. When I was in Northern California, I got, got something called Valley Fever. And it's only in the San Joaquin Valley in California and parts of New Mexico. And it's a spore that grows in the ground. And when in certain times of the year when the fucking blooms, when the flowers and everything bloom, the spore comes out of the ground. <clears throat> and if you're not from there, <coughs> fuck, man. <clears throat> people who are from there are immune to it. And people that just come there, some people interact and just catch it. Like, it, not everybody, but some people, and I got it. I was one of the people who got it. And, dude, Valley Fever is nothing to fuck with. It kills young people. It kills kids and old people. I've never been sick like this before in my life. It's like having the flu, but without the the, the puking. And I, you, you get insomnia because you can't... Dude, it's, it's, it's a bad motherfucker. It's a bad motherfucker. You get insomnia from it? Yeah. Really? I didn't wow. sleep for days. Days because it just it do it just it it, it it fucking tunes you up real bad. It's yeah. a bad motherfucker. And what's it called? It's called Valley Fever. 
And what is that? Just from being in a different climate, or no? I, or I, it's just I, I'll pull it up on fucking. I'll pull it up on YouTube real quick, or I'll pull it up on uh, just so I can get like the fucking gist of it or read the. But yeah, I had it, dude. It's a bad motherfucker, bro. I was in the hospital, right? And when I went to the hospital, they fucking they took my blood, um. And dude, they I found out I had uh, 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 low potassium, so I've come some kind of potassium deficiency in my blood. That it fucks me up. It makes me fucking want to go out and shit. And I didn't know this. So now I have to take... I take a multivitamin every day. Now I got myself balanced out now. Um, yeah, yeah. If you don't have potassium, like when you go to get up quick, like you'll start seeing oh, yeah, like dots and shit. Yeah, yeah, like you'll fucking want to go out. And do yeah. that ha that was happening and I could yeah. never... So yeah. Yeah, that, that's a really strong sign of... Yeah, potassium. so, so check this out. Um, valley fever is a fungal infection caused by uh, coccidiodes organisms... It can cause signs and symptoms such as a fever, cough, and tiredness. Two coccophagal fungi species cause valley fever. These fungi are commonly found in the soil spe in, in sp specific regions. So, yeah, it's like a fucking, like I said, it's like a fungi that these two spores mix in certain regions of the United States. And it's it's like a fucking, uh, it's a fungal infection is what it is. Ugh. And Man, that spreads like crazy. Dude, it's no fucking joke, dude. It is no fucking joke. How long did it take you to get through that? Two weeks. Oof. It was over 14 days. Yeah, valley fever is, oh shit, is Arizona's disease. While rare in a national level, valley fever is common in the southwest United States and northern Mexico. Yeah, so I had that shit, dude. It's no fucking joke, bro. So this guy's asymptomatic to COVID, but you get rocked with this. Oh, I got <laughs> Dude, this shit was no fucking joke, dude. Like, I thought I was going to die, man. Like, never in my life have I ever been to the point to where I didn't know if I was going to make it or not. And this was definitely one of those times because it just wouldn't go away. And it felt like it kept getting worse and worse and worse, and it just wouldn't go away. And I'm like, what the fuck? So finally, I checked myself into the hospital in, like, Tracy, California, and I was in the hospital for like three days, and they ran all kinds of tests on me and figured out what it was. And they ran all my blood. They fucking checked my liver. So I, I understand that it's fungal, but like, why is it there in California, but like not here? Or... Because it's it's regional. Because this fungal infection is from a fungi that it comes from the soil. I see. It means so it's, it's like a flower that only blooms in one part of the country. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. So and when these two fucking these two Kawakakai fucking whatever get together it fucking causes this fire this fungal infection if you and I was out hiking like I used to go out hiking and shit in northern California so that's how I got it because I would be out there in the fucking hills hiking and going on fucking just by myself like I put on a big pack and I'd go fucking hiking I had a big fucking duck dynasty beard <laughs> remember I fucking yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. remember last dying, episode I dying, I yeah I had dying. a fucking big duck dynasty beard I just put yeah. a pack on I'd be out there in the hills in California and that's how it fucking I see. So everything has to line up. The climate's got to be right. The soil's got to be right for it to feed. Yeah, yeah and look, and it's two, fungi's it's, fucked up. It's two different fungi that mix together that oh, caused sure. the fungi that caused the fungal infection. So oh, okay, it's just it's about a lot of bad things have to go wrong at the same time. And everything's just got to be perfect. It happened it to just me. Happens to be there. Fucking huh? happened to me, dude. Fuck. Yeah, I was fucking jacked, man. <laughs> dude, that shit <laughs> fucked me up, dude. Yeah, I was dude, so dehydrated, like I couldn't keep any water down. I couldn't eat or keep any water down. I went down to like 134 pounds and like I was fucking so dehydrated. They had to put like four bags of saline solution in me. Keep me there for three days. Fucking I was eating like soft foods like, at, like dude, it was bad. And sure, they had me and on like sure, yeah. and sure yeah, to like get the, get yeah. the vitamins back in me because I get couldn't. some calories in Dude, because I couldn't yeah. keep no, I couldn't eat. Dude, it was bad, bro. It was a fucking bad, man. How old were you when you got this? I was, this was 2017. Damn. This was like four years ago when I was in California. So you got it when you were a little bit older. It's not like you got it when you were I was younger. like 30 fucking three or 32 Ooh. or 33. Yeah, that hurt, huh? Yeah. Fuck. I was like 31 or 32 or something like that, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Bad dude, man. Lost like fucking 15, 20 pounds, dude. It was fucking bad, man. Were you still able to hit the weed? To try yeah, to you know, I, dude, I did, you know what I mean, but... Yeah, fuck, dude. There's nothing you can do with it. One of my roommates had lean, and I was fucking doing that, too, bro. I was fucking mixing fucking syrup and soda and... What's the thing with lean? I, I've never done. It's I just don't like per, like when, when you per, it's promethazine and fucking cough syrup. Right, but I mean, when you take it, like, what's the like? How do you feel? It's like you're fucking on heroin. I, it's a downer. It's a fucking. It's a, down. it's a downer. It's like you know. It's like um, like an oxycodone feeling. So like you were talking about like you know you could rap and if you wanted to you could probably blow some shit up if you wanted to. Why would 
the lean be an interest to rappers? I don't know, man. I've only done it like a handful of times in my life, and you know, I don't know. It's just uh, it slows you down, and it slows your thought process down, so it gives you more time to actually think about like what you want to say before you say it. And I guess if you're a rapper, that's an advantage. Because you could be creative, I guess. Right? Yeah, because it slows down and puts you in, like, this slump, this, like, fucking slump, this, like, you know, lethargic state where you can just kind of, like, write and think. And But then how the fuck do you get through a, a you know, like a two-hour concert drinking lean? You don't, and you put on a shitty performance. So, or, I don't or, really think they drink. I don't really think the lean is, like, a thing anymore. No. No, but I, I mean, think it, it was. Yeah, it was, what's but I don't name? think it is anymore. What's the guy that uh, passed away dating that hot broad? Uh, what the hell's her name? Uh... What the hell is the guy? The white kid. He he could actually rap really good. He overdosed. Uh, You're talking about uh, uh, Mac Miller. Yeah, Mac Miller. Yeah. Yeah. He was drinking lean heavy. But the, when you ha if you're if you're drinking lean, mm -hmm. when you have to take like Coke, for example, to I get up to no, you, know, you would hell no. You I was would, always curious. Dude, you'd have a heart attack. You that's fucking speed. That you can't mix drugs like that. <clears throat> you can't mix uppers and downers. It's fucking speedballing. <sighs> I don't know how they do it then. Because, yeah, I mean, because I don't know. I don't know. Like I, said, I did it. Get a couple, to it I did so it. Easily. I did it to sleep, man. When I was fucked up on that that valley fever, like my my roommate had it, and I bought a bottle off her. I bought the whole fucking thing off her. And this is 2017. This is when the good shit was going around. I mean, it wasn't the activist, but it was the fucking. It was the other one. So then, when you, when you took it, what, it just knocked you out. Oh yeah, fuck yeah! I was sleep fucking, like a baby. Wham! Put me yeah. out, and I'd wake up, and I'd still be fucked up, still be sick as fuck, dude. Like. Man, just a total fucking nightmare. yeah. It was a bad do, man. It was a bad do, but yeah, no, I got over it and I found out I have a fucking potassium deficiency in my blood, you know. But I got it all balanced out now. I eat, um, I eat bananas every morning and I take my multivitamins. Yeah, that's what I need. Yeah. But that potassium will fuck you up. It will. Yeah, dude, I could. That would happen to me a lot. Like I would just get up and I would just be like, "Whoa!" I grab the wall or whatever. I'd be and I would go blind sometimes. Yeah, like I stand up and I would just go blind. Like I would lose my vision. A lot, just because I studied it, I know I'm right. Um, a lot of times, when if your potassium <laughs> or your sugar gets too low, like you'll get like tunnel vision, mm -hmm. and as soon as you get that potassium in it in you, boom, it goes away. Like comes that. right back. Yeah, you come right back to life. Yeah, I, I had I used to get that all the time, like uh, low sugar, because mm -hmm. like I would run and then go in the sauna and like pretty much try to kill myself. Dude, that this. happens to me when I smoke pot sometimes. Like if I wake up in the morning and I just start smoking right away before I eat anything. Dude, my fucking my either my blood pressure, my sugar just fucking drops, dude. And I'm like, I'm like, fuck, dude. I gotta, I'm fumbling for fucking candy and like Any, anything with sugar. I like. feel like I'm on my way out, dude. Like, so you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I have a whole drawer at my house full of Capri Sun because it's pure sugar. Yeah. Terrible, terrible for any kid, by the way. Yeah. But if you're, you know, about to fall over, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I keep uh, Jolly Ranchers and like hard candy. So I need it because that's fucking hard sugar, right? Yeah, there. but you gotta melt it though. With the Capri Sun, you can just bang it out right away. Yeah, I just throw it in my mouth, and I'm just, like, fucking lean back, and I'm just, like, suck on it. Oh, yeah, we had a dude at the fucking tattoo shop, like, pass out and have a seizure the other day when he was getting tattooed. What the fuck was that from? I guess he didn't eat nothing. He took some kind of medication before he came in, and the motherfucker just started having a seizure, dude. It was fucking wild. Was it your client? No, it wasn't my client. It was another person's client. I was just kind of, like, sitting there like, dude... And I was like, fucking... Here we go. Yeah, it was fucking <laughs> wild. And then he still got fucking, went through and got tattooed. <laughs> he still, like, he was like, took it like a champ, dude. He got, hey. they, he got some sugar. They got the snap, the, the smelling thing, the snap. Oh, yeah, fucking, yeah, yeah, And he fucking... Dude, that's the only person I've never seen wake up from the smelling salts. T didn't wake up, dude. He fucking was just like... After he had the seizure, they cracked it, and he was like fucking like this, and he was just fucking... Like, he was asleep for a second. And, like, nobody called an ambulance or nothing. Everybody just kind of sat there and just fucking waited for a minute. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, and he just came back to life, dude. It was like, look, we ain't calling nobody. I think so... he came back to life, came back up and said, can I take my shoes off? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> and then, and, and like, the shop's take... like, we don't want this type of publicity. Yeah, right? he's like, can I take my shoes off? And he fucking just, he came back and got the tattoo and it was all good. I was like, wow, that's crazy as fuck. So man. dude comes in for a tattoo, has a seizure. Passes out. He Passes was, he was out. out cold. Doesn't yeah. even know what fucking planet he's on. He woke up and, and like, man, he's like, did I go out? <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Yeah, dude. I've never, like, I looked over. He's like, he's having a seizure and fucking. And the dude that tattooed him, the guy that was tattooing him is deaf. The it's, com fuck? it's completely deaf. Yeah, one of the artists at our shop is completely impressive. deaf. Been deaf, been deaf since birth. Wow. And he's one of the best tattoo artists I've ever had the pleasure of working with. Yeah. Yeah, he's just, he's a hey, bad, he's a bad. Congratulations to him, man. He's a bad motherfucker. Now, that's a real fight, though. See, you and me think we got fights. Yeah. And you can't hear it, man. Can you imagine that? That's a real fight. Yeah.
So whenever yeah. you or I or anybody else thinks that their life is fucked up. Yeah. But he can read lips like you can talk to him normal. But still, just imagine yeah. not being able, like you can never hear a woman who loves voice, music, yourself. You don't hear something, you fuck, you don't fuck hear fuck something fucked up is sometimes we'll be in the shop, like I'll be fucking rapping and singing and like I kind of feel bad. From like, I feel bad for enjoying music in front of them. Yeah, but you know what I mean. Like I kind of feel bad about that. Like, damn, this motherfucker don't he doesn't understand. Like he doesn't know. And me, when I'm I'm all you know what I mean. Like all day long with music, I'm always rapping and singing and fucking. And then when I see him, I'm like, fuck, dude, I kind of feel bad, and I kind of stop a little bit, you know, because I'm like, he, he does just doesn't know what, and he just never he's never heard music before. Can you imagine that? That's no. what I'm saying. Like, no, I like couldn't. you know, I do, you do, everybody, everybody bitches about this and that. Imagine being him, and somehow he pulled through it and he's able to tap. Now, I would think he would need to hear the gun or yeah. but he, maybe he can feel the vibration, you know, through his hand or something. But to know. just never be able to sit down and watch a movie and hear it, you got to read titles. Subtitles, yeah. And he doesn't even know what his own voice sounds like right now. I mean, that He doesn't really have a voice. This is the thing. He can talk. Like he can he can and it's the weird thing is he can he can talk to you like we're talking now, except for it's almost it's it's a little it's you you can tell he can't hear. But I don't know how we learn how to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like you, he can talk. Like we, he can sit here and have a conversation with you when he looks just looks real, real close at your mouth, and he'd be like, "Okay," and this, that, and he'll explain shit to you. And like I sit there and just kick it with him all day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Me and him just kick it. But yeah, I couldn't imagine. I think about it all the time. Like I couldn't imagine, dude. Like you know. But what, I think which I, one I would think you give I up? Your sight or your fucking your hearing? Hands down, hearing. Hearing. Hands down. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fuck. Hands that. fucking down. Fuck that. I'm blind. Kill me. Yeah. Me too. I, no, I, there's I, no I, way. I'll, I'll I'll put a gun on my own mouth. <clears throat> yeah, there's no way. You're, yeah, you're you're then you're you're dependent on somebody else for the rest. of Hearing, your life. I'll, I'll sit around and and tell myself that well, next year they're gonna come out with a stem cell that's gonna you know correct it. Whatever. Dude, I can see fucking. Well, at least I can fucking see. I do. I can see titties and stuff like that. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm good, bro. You know I can fuck it. I'll read the subtitles. Right, but if I'm and I'll get blind, big ass speakers in my car, I can feel the bass. If I was, yeah, <laughs> you know and over time I mean? you, you, was, you you would like learn the beat and you could yeah, probably yeah, dance exactly. stuff. Yeah, you know because yeah, yeah. you could feel the vibration. But big old speakers in my car. Wow. Because you can feel it Like alright Now I know I'm fucking But yeah I don't know man But blind Fuck that I don't want to be here I go blind Fuck that And actually my vision yeah. Was 20 My vision was 20 uh, Like one thing I was legally blind If I was one more point Really? Yeah Did you get LASIK? Yeah Yeah Yeah. And now you're good right? Yeah I was My, my contacts were minus 8.5 With an astigmatism My cousin won't get LASIK Because he says Uh if you get laser, if you get laser, he said when people were getting LASIK or committing suicide, I got LASIK and I had an astigmatism. If, if my dude, I, I have an astigmatism at night, dude. The lights, the lights from the other cars, it blurs. Wham, yeah. like this, and I can't see shit. So I had, but but I, during the day, like right now, I'm fine. Like, and I got but really super sensitive because my eyes are blue and. But but remember, you're talking about the lights. Dude, these lights, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. That, that's, that's why I wear my sunglasses in here. Astigmatism, it is. But I I had one point seven five astigmatism. If you've ever had, you know, I can't I couldn't see far away. It only goes up, so one point it only goes up to two. Right. I mean, anything other than that, you're gonna have to wear fucking you know bottle glasses. <laughs> and my uh, not being able to see far away, if I would I was at eight point five. If I would have went to mm. nine, the laser wouldn't have worked. I just caught it right in time. It's a green fucking light, and now my vision's twenty fifteen with no contacts. And this is three years ago. Mm -hmm. Not one issue. The only issue I had was like the first two weeks, your eyes are kind of dry. Yeah. But the second they do it, it's like, what the fuck? I mean, no shit. 2015. Yeah. So damn near legally blind to 2015. Like, yeah. If I wanted to go into the military, which I can't lift a hammer, so that would never work. Yeah. But if I wanted, like, my vision would be there to be like a sniper. Yeah. Well, I have 2020. I have perfect vision. Mine's better than yours. I got 2050. Yeah. I got perfect fucking vision. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but it's like at night, dude, them motherfucking like, lights. Well, you don't have perfect vision because you have an astigmatism. Yeah. Yeah. You're and right. that's a bitch. And it will, it will, but I, yeah. Like, over time, it will, it will create that glare. Yeah. 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 yeah it's like, sucks. I couldn't sit with, with these lights either. Three years ago, because it would glare yeah. all over me. I'm just, that's why I'm just always fucking got to rock the fucking. <laughs> you know I, mean? I, pr I the prefer shade. having shades on too, even now. You know, yeah. just, just from the passive, because everything's so fucking yeah. bright all the time. Yeah, living in Arizona, dude. That's the fucking sun out there is murder for my eyes. I, I, I dude, I have these things on all day, every day out there. Like, I, as soon as I walk out of the building, before I walk out of the building, they go on before I even go outside. Because if I walk outside, I'm done. Like, I'm fucking like, I can't, you know, I can't see shit. I can't drive. I can't function. Yeah, the light fucks me up. Yeah. 
So what do we see in the future here from John Boziak, Boziak Conundrum? Content, content, content. You know, uh, I'm trying to figure out some kind of filming schedule. I'm trying to figure out some kind of, you know, some kind of fucking organization to, to what I'm doing. Because right now it's just, I'm just haphazardly, Up uh, you know, bopping along. You know, like I said, a blind man with a very dim flashlight. <laughs> That's how I consider myself right now. You know what I mean? Because I'm just, I'm learning everything. So, you know, who knows? I want to start doing interviews, kind of like what we're doing here. Um you know, I like the one we filmed yesterday, or was, or was it this morning? This morning, cause we, yeah. I fucked. Well, yesterday, yesterday and this morning, yeah. uh, with like a co-host, and you know, I think that would, uh, I think that would work out pretty good for me. So yeah, I don't know. I think yeah, that, now that was our first run. Yeah, you know, we we didn't. I I never did it, nor did you. Yeah, you know, but I, I think it went pretty yeah, good. You know, this, given the circumstances, yeah, of never this whole going thing it. is it's a marathon. It's, it's not. A it's marathon. not a not a not a sprint. Yeah. So I'm just I plug away at it slowly and I just continue as long as I consistently, you know, put out content and just keep figuring it out, it's gonna get better and better. And then over time you get more equipment and then yeah, you, you, you know, you, evolve. You, you slowly upgrading equipment, you slowly start expanding and fucking right. you follow the universe, you just evolve. Yeah. You just exactly. evolve and evolve and evolve and evolve. That's it. You keep moving, you keep adapting, you know what I'm saying? Whatever's best for me at this point in time, you can make decisions, you make changes. Yeah, that's life. So we should look for something new from uh, the Boziak. Yeah, pretty soon. Yeah, right? yeah. I'm gonna have some pretty shit, pretty cool shit going on over on my channel for and sure. And ours blowing up. You're getting real fucking. Dude, good my heart. Uh, you know, I my listen. I'm getting ready to to release probably five or six different pieces. Um, I would put that up there. But yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I'm getting ready to release uh, five or six different pieces here, and it's not. I'm not really not really paintings. Um, I'm I'm you know I grew up doing like I grew up collecting stickers now you know in, in the late 80s and early 90s like stickers were everywhere like I don't remember remember those sticker vending machines yeah where you'd get the stickers you out pull it out yeah pull you, the, like the handle out yeah you have like the thing that we pull yeah and the sticker would yeah. come out and it'd be like a fucking like a reflective sticker or whatever like so I had books of just every page was just collages of stickers you know what I mean? And I did that all throughout my childhood and not until I was like you know whatever like a young teen or whatever then I kind of stopped but my canvas paintings, my canvas art is going to kind of be a, like a throwback to that, you know, because now it's the 21st century. So we've got technology. So I can pretty much make my own stickers now. You know what I mean? Like I got Pro, I got, the, I got the iPad now. So I got the Procreate on the iPad and, you know, I can do some crazy shit. So the, the art, the, 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 the projects I have coming out now, the, like the next four or five projects I have coming out uh, are going to be really fucking cool. And where can we find these projects? Uh, I'm going to post everything on my YouTube page. I will post, um, you know, videos of myself creating the art. And then, you know, like I said, I'm going to have um, hopefully like a little jump page set up. Like I'm going to build a web page and, you know, hopefully where I can, you know, sell my art. I'm also going to be doing merch and uh, I think like RFID wallets that protect your fucking credit card from <laughs> yeah, hackers. Right, you know what I right, mean? Right. Like just I'm going to have I'm going to have a number of things uh, that are going to be up and for sale. Okay, so you're going to come out with all that yeah. and maybe, what, in the next month or two? Yeah, yeah, the next up. 30 to 60 days, everything should be up and open and out and rock and rolling. So keep a check out for that website, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, So the website will be coming soon. You can get all the merch. Put your book on there. Yeah, you yeah, know? my book, everything. Bent. Mm -hmm. um, and then everything else is to come. And a little bit of a change up, maybe, possibly, right? Yeah, maybe yeah. Uh, two people in the studio. You built a great studio. I, I can't believe how well you centered it. It's yeah, great. I have a, I have a good studio, man. You know, so yeah. Hopefully, uh, I can find me a co-host and uh, you know somebody that I can we I vibe with, and that's you know also has a personality. Uh, you know, if I do, I do. If I don't, I don't. I don't want to force it. You know, if it na happens yeah. naturally, then I think that's best for the channel. Yeah, you know how it is. Yeah, well, like we were saying on your podcast. Yes. You know, when when you don't give a fuck and you're just doing it for therapy or because you love it, that's when things happen. Yeah. It's when you're trying too hard, then you fuck it up. Yeah. All right, Johnny. Well, thank you for your time and thank you for helping me. Uh, you helped me a lot. You've done a lot for me, and tomorrow will be fun to organize all this shit in the new studio. <laughs> but thank you for coming here. Maybe we'll get another one in tomorrow. Yeah, maybe. All right, buddy. All right, thank buddy. you very much. Yeah.